Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show again. I'm gonna do one more video on this guy and what do I think about something like this compared to a eight inch SCT on this guy or an eight inch Dobsonian. Let me go get the eight inch SCT and show you uh, what I think. Okay guys, so if you, if you saw my last video where me and Angelus went up north, it was called going up north and viewing some of the darkest skies. I did a part one and part two to that. It was only a few weeks ago. Um, I think it was released in late November, early December. So take a look at that if you if you haven't. Now, I brought two scopes up for that observing session in the gray zone. This was one of them, eight inch F10 SCT. For you guys that don't know what an SCT, it has a lens in the front. Um, mirror at the back it uses both lenses and mirrors and i brought this guy i also brought a sky watcher 80 mil uh, ed which is f 7.5 so let me talk about what do i think uh an eight inch sct this guy or an eight inch daub now really this uh guy compared to the eight inch daub i did a couple videos on daubs uh, in uh, December, take a look at them if you haven't. Uh, I prefer an eight inch EQ scope versus an e eight inch EQ daub. Why? As you guys saw by my other video, the eight inch daub's about this high, you're gonna be bending down, you either need to put it on a type of stool, Orion sells one, uh, I'll, put it up, I'll put a picture up uh, to raise it 12 inches, I think it's 179 US. They also sell a lot of people, if, you know, to lift it. The, uh, Ryan sells a daub carrier. I'll put a post, uh, a picture of that. It's 149 US. Um, and then you might need a chair. Now, Astro chairs are like three to four hundred dollars. You can make them any height you want. Also, remember I mentioned on a couple other videos, the problem with Dobbs, um, when you're at the, is, is there's no tracking. You could purchase tracking for it, like a tracking platform, but the, the mass produced ones are about 600 Canadian, and then they go to thousands for more custom made ones. So they're very expensive, cost more than the whole telescope. I don't think there's even a point to that. But again, also you're moving it by hand, up, down, left, and right. Now it's okay when you're looking at Again, I don't, I'm not saying I hate dogs. I have had dogs in the past, 16 inch, and in fact, I just ordered uh, about three days ago a meat 12 inch light bridge Dobsonian. That's gonna be for the deep sky objects at the country site that we're gonna go camping there again in the summer, maybe at least once a month um, type of thing. So I'm gonna use that up there. So that's where it's gonna excel. and the country skies for the big deep sky objects. A nice 12 inch is a, a nice and big where it co collect a lot of light. So for the low power to the medium uh, power, medium high-ish is okay. But when you're at extreme high powers, you don't have slow motion controls on a dog. So inching it by hand doesn't work always. Um, so that's what I don't like. So if I had my choice, I would prefer a, a uh, and remember, the DAUB is an F6, the EQ version is an F5. Now, I would prefer this guy on an EQ mount. The height is perfect for any adult. I mean, you could even, the tripods, it's on its smallest right now. So I could even put it much higher, at least another almost three feet taller. But you don't need to because it's already at the perfect height. Um, it, it already has slow motion controls. You can just point it north. Uh, or polar align it and now you can track on one axis instead of two you can attach a motor on here and it'll follow the planet instead of you have have to always be inching uh, so it just uh, is best of both worlds now some people might say but it's a lot more bulkier well really it's not take this into consideration the 8 inch daub is f6 so it's longer so it's probably gonna be about six or seven pounds more, okay? Now, the dog has bearings on it that twist on the base. Uh, let's just say it's about the same 
weight as the two rings in the bar. So that cancels that out. But the six to seven pounds it being longer, remember that. Now an EQ5 with this aluminum tripod, let's say, is probably only, you know what? I should just do it. Let me go weigh it because I know the eight inch Dobsonian base is 27 and a half pounds. Roughly depends on the manufacturer, but it's around 27 to 30 pounds. So I wanna see what this weighs and that way I can give you guys an accurate figure. Okay guys, that was easy. I took out the tube, put the scale underneath, and I weighed the EQ5 with the counterweight, with the tripod, everything. It's exactly 30 pounds. So there you go guys. This version is actually less uh, weight than the Dobsonian. So really, this guy's 30 pounds with a 12 pound counterweight. Um, and so it's 30 pounds for this, 27 there, but it's also, uh, the tube is six, seven pounds. So really, this is actually lighter by about three pounds. Not much more, but a lot of people, you know, I've read is, oh, an EQ mounted, you know, I just read this uh, Thursday, Friday, an EQ mounted eight inch is huge, it's heavier, what, and they told this person, get a dog. I just proved that this is actually lighter than a dog. It's the proper height, it's, it has slow motion controls, you could pull her axis. It's a no brainer to me. I think it's just a, a way better. Uh, it, you know, they say the daub is the best bang for the buck, but if you have to buy uh, the daub wheeler, like I showed you a picture, if you have to put it on a table, if you gotta buy a stool, if you gotta buy that tracking platform, it's actually twice as expensive. And also people say it's heavier. How's it heavier? I can carry this guy, not a problem. And I can carry this guy probably, I don't know, 50, 60 feet, 70, 80 feet, and it's not a problem. So how's it heavier? It's not heavier. It is, it is a bit heavy, but I'm only 5'6", 150 pounds. I can easily carry this. Again, not a problem. Now, if you have a backyard, you can take it in two steps if you're, you know, uh, got a bad back or anything, or if you don't, if you're going through a door or something, just to be more careful, um, take it in two, two pieces, no big deal, but it's not heavy. Okay, so I would prefer this way over a daub. Now, what would be the difference between an eight inch SCT? Now, as you can see, here I have the Crayfoot Focuser at the back, so it's a lot longer than it needs to be, but this still is almost twice as small, and this is the one I brought to the cottage in that video I was talking about, going to dark skies. Now the difference is this guy's a 2,000 millimeter focal length, this guy's only a thousand. So it's twice as wide as this guy. And us looking at like Andromeda Galaxy with a 56 millimeter two inch eyepiece, I still couldn't see Andromeda the full thing. We only saw about three quarters of the view. So I was hoping that's the one downside of this guy. It's lighter and it's smaller package. So if you like that and has more power per eyepiece, uh, so if that's what you want, you know, that's why the eight inch is considered the best uh, type of scope um, overall. Um, but this I think would have been better for up north if I had it back then. Um, just because again, the stuff that I was showing Angelus, the Andromeda Galaxy, if by putting that same eyepiece in here, I would have got twice the field of view, and then the galaxy would have just, yeah, it would have been smaller, but it would have been easier to see. Instead of it being so close and filling the whole eyepiece, it's harder to see against a black background. So also like the double cluster, we were too close. So Angelus couldn't really tell that it was two clusters really close together. So because we were, uh, I couldn't go any lower, it was just, I don't know, it just looked like random stars, I think. Um, and, and stuff like that. So I think this would have been better for that situation instead of the SCT, because I could have gotten a wider field of view. Now, maybe in this guy, um, I could have put a focal reducer on, and that will make it uh, F6.3 instead of F10. That then would be very close to here, because then that would be about 1300 millimeter focal length that you could uh, take this down 
uh, from 2000 to 1300. So then virtually it would be very close to that guy. Um, so really, I, I, the preference for me then is, would be if you like the SCT, being it half the size and half the weight, uh, being more portable, then you can go that route. It, but for the deep sky, there's going to be some stuff that it's too powerful for. So to get that extra field of view, you need two things. You need the, well, maybe three, I guess, would be the two-inch diagonal. Then you're going to need a low-power two-inch eyepiece. And then you might need a focal reducer for some of those big still objects that it's still too powerful for. So if you do those three things on there, then it would be okay. I, right now, I didn't have a focal reducer. So those objects that we looked to uh, was just a little too powerful. So again, this guy would have been easier because it's already 50% wider field of view. Uh, now, mind you, this will have a little bit of coma at, at the edges, the last 20%, but it's not too bad for deep sky objects. Some people, if you're gonna image with it, some people buy a coma corrector, but then those are three to $400 for the low name brands, and it could be even more for the expensive name brands. So my preference is, then uh, between a daub and this guy, I think this is a clear winner by everything I just explained. Between the SCT, I think it's a draw. You guys decide. If you think portability is, and weight is, you know, if you want something half, again, remember this part here um, is almost four inches longer than it has to be because I have a uh, moonlight. Let me get closer to there. So I got a moonlight focuser. Uh, here, so it would be much smaller and way less too. Uh, but anyway, it just depends on what you guys feel. If you want an SET for uh, the deep um, sky objects, again, you might need a two inch diagonal, a, a low two inch eyepiece, and maybe a focal reducer as well. And then it would be very comparable to something like that. Um, but also, the SCT costs a lot more to begin with, but you maybe have best of both worlds. You can get almost to the focal with the length of this guy, but also without it, you still have the, uh, the, <clears throat> of the power of the 2,000 millimeter focal length for the planets and stuff like that where you need um, that extra power. So there's that as well. So I'll leave it up to you guys there. I like both. Uh, but anyway, that's what this would compare to the three different types and that's it. But um, the reason is when we were viewing some of the stuff like the Hercules cluster and some of those deep sky objects, even in an eight inch, even though if I would have brought this guy, the field of view would have been wide, but I want to see the deep sky objects even brighter. And I was thinking, you know, you guys saw me do a video of the 10 inch sky watcher flex tube. A 10 inch would be about 50% more brighter than the eight, but I think I wanted even more. So that's why I ordered the Mead Lightbridge 12 inch, because that's gonna be, I don't know, I'm just guessing like over 120% brighter than an eight inch. And I want to see that deep sky objects and Angelus 2 really bright. Um, so that's what I'm planning. But anyway, this is what this guy is. My views, this compared to eight inch SCT, compared to eight inch Daub, you guys make up your mind which one you like uh, the difference. And that's it. Joe Jaguar. See you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe.